Hi, today I'm going to show you how to stretch and prep your own canvas. Hi, today I'm going to show you um, how to assemble a stretcher bar assembly um, using Masterpiece Pro Monet stretcher bar and it's a kit. Each kit comes with two two side panels and a crossbar brace. So you're going to need one set of each for one for your length and, and your height. So you're also going to need a screwdriver, some wood glue, a triangle and a hammer. So let's get started. You'll find the little screws taped inside here. There's, there's one little screw and these are your keys. You want to hang on to these. You'll, you'll need these. I like to use this brand because it, it comes as a kit. A lot, I've seen some others that are assembled really similar to this, but you have to buy the crossbars and the keys separately. So I like that this comes as a kit. And I purchased this at our local art supply store in Denver here, which is Miningers. I've looked online for this product, but I haven't found the same brand. I found a similar brand on Dick Blick, but like I said, you have to buy the crossbars separately. I'm going to be making a 20 by 40 frame and this cost me about, uh, I would say about $22 to do this. Okay, so let's get our two cross pieces out of the way. And then you want to assemble it um, with the beveled edge down. Um, the beveled edge, it, I like this brand also because it has a little bit of a beveled edge on it so that um, your painting doesn't touch the edge of the wood. And that's a real big bonus for me. I also like the deep profile ones. This is an inch and a half profile and it's pretty beefy. When you get it put, put all together, it is very sturdy. So let's lay it out here. And we want the one with the bevel to be toward the outside. There we go. Okay. And then the cross piece goes like this. The first thing we're going to do is assemble the crossbar in the middle, and that has to be screwed and glued. So we're going to put a little bit of glue right there and allow that to dry until it's completely dry before we assemble the rest of it. So you just put a little glue right there. And then fit it down inside there nice. And then take our screw. You only need one screw. It comes with two, but you'll only need one screw. That's actually a Phillips. There we go. Day. Okay, so just screw it on down in there. And then I, I usually let this dry sometimes overnight. It just depends. Um, depends on if I have time to finish it that day. So you want to get it screwed in so it's nice and flush. Okay. And while this is drying, this probably actually won't need to go overnight, I don't think. So I'm just going to set this aside while we work on the rest of it. So now comes assembling the outer part. So you want to fit these together. And they do slide together. You just want to kind of wiggle them until you get them together. Okay, once you get it pretty much hammered on, you want to check it with a triangle to make sure. And let's flip it back over so we're working on the back side of it. You want to check the inside 
and that's not, uh, that's not right. So you want to keep hammering it in and adjusting it until you get a square. Okay, that side's pretty straight. That's pretty straight. We have a little gap here, but I might be able to, yeah, it's, it's straight. We just got a little gap in it. So it just takes a little patience. You have to keep working with it and kind of tap in here and tap in there and until you get it. And it's time to put the crossbar piece in. The crossbar piece doesn't actually fit in these little slots. There's little grooves right here. It doesn't actually fit in there. It floats in there. And then we use the keys to hold it in. It's actually pretty ingenious, I think. And you want it to float above. You don't want it to come down and, and for the wood to hang below onto the front of the painting, if that makes sense. And then you have the key right here. And you'll notice the key is wedge shaped. And it goes in, um, I'll show you the way it goes in. It, it goes in one way and it, it kind of wedges in there and it keeps the bar in place, the crossbar in place. Notice on the crossbars that it's angled. This only goes in one way. It, on, it won't go in the other side because the notch is smaller. So you need to be sure that you put it in the right side. There, and see the crossbar slides into it. There we go. And then this one is where the fat side is, so slide it in there. This side's a little looser. And then this is this fat side is over on this side, my left side, so slide it on in. So then you can tap them into place um, and just slide them in as far as you can. <coughs> I got a gap over here, so I'm going to check this, make sure that's still straight. It is still straight. I don't like that gap in the corner. So I'm just going to go and snug the corners up and then check, check to make sure it's plumb still. is very straight. This side is a little is a little loose. I don't like that being loose. But you see how the keys just hold it in there? And the tighter you can get the keys in there, the sturdier it's gonna be. <laughs> there we go. That's nice and nice and strong now. Okay. So then we flip it over and we have the bevel edge all the way around and it's ready to um, stretch the canvas in gesso. For stretching the canvas, you're going to need the canvas um, and I bought a bolt of this. I got this at Joanne Fabric for, it was half price, so I got it for $5 a yard and I have a whole bolt of it. so. Um, I don't know what weight this is, but it's pretty heavy duty um, natural duck cloth. It doesn't say what weight it is, but it's, it's very heavy. Um, you'll need a staple gun, staples, scissors, and a hammer to uh, tap in any 
of the staples that don't get in all the way. And I like to leave about four inches extra on each side. And the reason I do that is in case it ever needs to be restretched or if I need to take it off the stretcher bars to ship it, um, there's plenty of, of selvage in the back for them to be able to restretch it. And it doesn't matter which side of the fabric you use. So we want to put it with the bevel side down. It doesn't matter if it's wrinkly. All these wrinkles are going to stretch right out when we put the gesso on. So I'm just going to even it out a little bit so we don't have quite so much selvage on the end. There we go. So I'm going to leave about four or five inches. So, um, the way that we do this when we stretch it on here, I don't use pliers. I really don't need to use pliers. This is flexible enough where I don't need to do that. But I always start in the middle. Put a staple on either side and just pull it tight. It doesn't have to be super tight, but it should be taut. So pull it tight and put a staple in on this side. And then what we do is we alternate sides and we work our way around. And I put a staple about every three or four inches. And then one on either side of the middle. Kind of pull this, pull the corner too so it's taut as well. I'm not going to go all the way to the corners, so I'm going to skip this side for now. I need to have a little bit of space over here to work with so I can miter the corner. Okay. I like to trim a little bit of the excess off the corners before I miter it, so I just whack a little triangle off of each corner. Helps it not to be so bulky so it'll lay up against the wall a little better. Okay, let me show you how to miter the corner. You want to tuck one edge down and it, it takes a little, a little kind of messing with it to get it to lay flat, but once you figure out how to do it, it'll, it'll, it'll be easy to do. So, what you want to do is make sure that when you flip this up that it, it makes a straight right angle right there. So that's not good. So you can try to, you can tuck it down in here a little bit. And it's okay to have a little extra up here. It's like once I get the first one, it's a piece of cake after that. Let's try tucking it in this side, see if that works a little better. No. Here we go. Okay. See how that's nice and, and a nice right angle right here? That's the way we want it to look. Okay, so you want to hold that there. Get your staple gun. A little staple right there. And then get it as smooth as you can get it. That's got like more of a little bump there than what I might like. And then I, where the, where the little bump is, I try to get that down a little better too, so. Doesn't hurt to have a few extra staples here on the corner, so. 
If you can see that, it's a nice sharp corner. And you want to pay attention when you do the rest of your corners that they're all going the same direction. So the corner on here, we want to go the same way. We don't, we, we don't want to have one go in one way and the other go in the other way. We want the fold to come over. So on this side, the fold will come over in the same way. The easiest way to do that is to turn the whole thing around and to do the same thing you just did on this side. That way you don't have to reverse anything you did. Nope, wrong way. It's easy to get confused too, so. There, yeah, see how we want it to go up this way? So now we just need to smooth it out a little bit down in there. There we go. See how that's nice and nice and straight right there? And you don't want it to hang over. You don't want you, you don't want it to hang over onto the side either, so be careful with that. This needs another staple over here first. Try to get it to lie it as flat and get it as tight as you can right there on the corner. This is the hardest part, is getting your corner nice and tight. Okay, I can see I just messed up on this. This needs to go the other way. This flips over here, so this needs to flip over here. So we'll just do the opposite of what we, what we did just now. You can see that it's not like super tight like a drum, uh, but it will be once we put the gesso on it. Okay, now for the fun part, applying the gesso. Um, you'll need gesso. I buy mine in a big bucket. It's just acrylic paint, white acrylic paint. Um, a mixing container, some water. I always thin it down. It's way too thick the way it comes straight out of the bucket. You need an old paintbrush or a gesso brush of some type. This is just one of the kind that you would use on the house. Um, something to stir with, and then a lint brush for getting, you want to go over, over your canvas and get all the little lints off or any little, you know, specks of dust or dirt. So I just go over that. You want it to be real clean. And make sure there's no little threads around and that your, your work surface is really clean. Don't worry about the wrinkles. The wrinkles, wrinkles will go away as soon as we put the paint on. So give it a stir. This stuff is real thick. See how thick this is? This is way too thick. So I usually thin it down with about half water and half gesso. You want it to be the consistency of heavy cream. It doesn't take a whole lot, actually. I, I usually don't even use a whole container of this. I 
I like to recycle stuff so you can see I'm using old coat hangers. I think I might have gotten it a little too thin. If you, if you get it too thin, it's okay. You can either add more paint or you can just put more coats on. It's actually, I, I like to apply it when it's a little thinner. It's easier to brush on, but you do have to put a few more coats on it. And then if you have any left over when you're done, just pour it back into the gesso bucket. Still not stirred up real good down there. Let's try that and see how that works. Yeah, that's 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 too too juicy. So we're gonna pour some back in the bucket. The stuff on the bottom is actually quite a bit thicker here, so just not able to get all the way down there with my stir stick. Much better. Today is a really hot day. It's about 90 to 95 degrees, so this is going to dry really fast. Okay. So then I just dip it. The first coat, I don't really worry about which direction to go. I just get it on there. Let me move this so you can see. You just want to get it inside, inside the weave of the canvas. Make sure that it soaks all the way through. You can kind of scrub it into it if you want. That works fine. If you see any little chunks of anything that doesn't belong there, um, feel free to stick your finger in there and take them out because you want it to be real smooth. One of the hazards of doing this outside is occasionally you get a bug that flies in there and you have to retrieve that. Unfortunately though, I don't have an area inside really that's big enough for me to do this. I don't know what I'm going to do this winter. I suppose I'll have to use the floor. I like to stretch my own canvases for a couple of reasons. First of all, I like the heavy prof or the deep profile. This is an inch and a half. Um, when I looked, I looked at Michael's and I have used gallery wrap canvases from there before, but the gallery wrap canvases, although they have a deeper profile, they use a spline method of um, attaching the canvas to the stretcher bars. And it's kind of like, like your screens on your windows. It has a piece of rubber and a groove, and it kind of pushes the fabric down into the groove, and that's how it holds it. Um, I used to use those, but I'm kind of concerned that that rubber might begin to harden over time. And it's also harder to tighten up the canvas if it starts to, you know, to get a little loose. Um, there's not really a good way to tighten the canvas up. On these, all you have to do is put the little, the, like the little keys I showed you, you can buy extra keys and you can put them in the corners and that spreads it out a little bit so it tightens the canvas up. Um, the other reason is that I like to do different sizes, like this size isn't even available. Um, it might be available at one of the larger art supply stores. This is a 20 by 40. And I also like to you know, know that it has plenty of gesso on it and I just enjoy um, the creative process from the very beginning. And it just, I take pride in my work and I'd like to, you know, kind of start that work off at the very beginning, knowing that I'm using good materials. These stretcher bars are very heavy duty and I'm real happy with them. 
even this one, you know, it's, it's not a huge piece, but it even has the crossbars going both directions, and you're not going to find that in, in one this size that you might find at an art supply. I looked online for this particular brand. I think it was called Masterpiece Monet, or I'll, look, I'll, I'll put the link on down below, but I actually couldn't find this particular brand online. I did find another brand on Dick Blick that went together in a similar fashion, but you had to buy each piece separately. So you had to buy, buy you know, two side pieces or two, four side pieces all together, whatever length you needed, and then you had to buy the crossbars separately. So I like the fact that it all comes together. It comes, to, it comes with the screw, the keys, and everything that you need. And I have a hair here. We don't want that to stay. So you can see how, how this is done. I, I continue on when I'm completely done. Well, I'll, first of all, let me say I'll give this probably three coats. When I'm completely done with it and it's dry, I will flip it over and I will gesso uh, the back of it also. The reason I do that is just so it has a nice finished, consistent look and also to keep it from fraying and unraveling on the back. So, so you can see it's not that difficult. Um, it's not that difficult to stretch your own canvas. The hardest part the hardest part of it really is mitering the corners, I would say, and getting those little keys in on the, on the brace pieces. So, I hope today's video was helpful and you'll try stretching your own canvas. I wanted to mention that you might want to go over your canvas with a fine grit sandpaper once the final layer of gesso is dry. Here's the math for doing your own canvas prep. I used a yard of canvas, and I paid $5 a yard with my 50% off coupon. I also had a half off coupon for the gesso, so I ended up paying $10 for a gallon of gesso, and I figured I used about $2 worth of gesso. The stretcher bars were $22 for a grand total of $29. You'll realize a greater savings with the larger canvases. Thanks for watching today. Please visit SeanWarrenFineArt.com or any of these social media sites. I've also included my contact information in the links below. I'll be adding new video weekly, so please subscribe to my channel so you'll be sure not to miss a thing.